Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us for part 3 of Ramadan Ramadan around the world as we enter into the last week of the holy month. Before we get started, uh, please note that the session is being recorded. And if you need to change your layout at any point during uh, today's today's session, you'll find the option in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Please, as you feel free as we go through to send your questions in the chat section on the right hand side of your screen also. Um, I will be my name is Heather Van Orkoven. As you can see, I will be the presenter today. I am part of our thought leadership team within the markets function. Um, at KPMG Lower Gulf, we have more than 75 nationalities uh, amongst our colleagues. Uh, because of that, we came up with the concept of Ramadan around the world. So we would have the opportunity to explore how the Holy Month is uh, celebrated around the world. Um, it's observed in many different ways. There are similarities, but there, it's celebrated in many different ways. And we've uh, we've learned about a few of those over the last couple of weeks from several colleagues. Um, just to briefly recap, last week we were joined from uh, joined by Qasim from our Oman firm. And he shared how Ramadan for him is an opportunity to recharge, spend time with friends and family, and give back to his local community. We were also joined by Diana, who shared the joys of celebrating Ramadan in her home country of Lebanon. Now I will turn it over to our two speakers for this week to introduce themselves. Um, Asma, a colleague of mine from the markets team, is from the UAE. And uh, Aruj, who hails from Pakistan, will also be sharing her experiences. After we hear from the two of them, Asma will take us through several Arabic phrases. With that, I would like to hand it over to Asma. Thank you, Heather. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Asma Rutaiba. Uh, I'm uh, from United Arab Emirates, uh, based in Abu Dhabi, and uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to be today with, uh, with KPMG family. Um, most of the people or who we have them here in uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, they can see us if they are from different nationalities, how we fast, how we do these things. So I thought I would I would speak about uh, fasting in, uh, in France. Um, I've been there for uh, many years. Uh, I practice uh, fasting during Ramadan and other uh, days there. Um, it's a little bit different than, than here in the specific things, but there are lots of points which is similar in, um, in, in other countries. Um, in Paris, we have, uh, like, like in UAE, we have uh, different nationalities. Uh, they have uh, the Muslim community is big and it's also growing there. Um, we have different uh, mosques there with, the, with different capacities, but their mosques a little bit uh, the design of it, it goes similar to the Moroccan uh, uh, designs, or the houses. And then, um, um, I'm not sure if, uh, if any, any of you, they've been here to Sheikh Zayed Mosque. If you go to the mosque, you will see there is a places to pray in, and there is another places for um, just to go around to see uh, the building. There is a library, a library, and other places to go in. In Paris, they have a similar to it, and even uh, for example, for praying, we have like an open place, and we have some rooms. In Paris, usually, uh, like half an hour before uh, before uh, iftar time, when we broke our fasting, um, lots of the people. It depends to the community where is the where is the mosque is sitting. Lots of people they join there. We have Muslim people, we have Christian, we have Jew people. Not only Muslim people they come to break their fast as a respect. 
their neighbors, all of them, they gather there. Um, some people uh, from the beginning of the month, they collect money and they buy a specific material for the food and they cook it, they bring it to the, to the mosque. Other people, before the uh, breaking the fasting, they bring with them food from their home. They, we usually we sit tables. Everybody sits there. We have a, uh, the place which is for uh, ladies, which is for uh, gentlemen. We uh, they prepare most of the people because there uh, there are the Moroccan, Algerian, Tunisian. They stay there, so they have a specific way to broke their fast. Usually, they drink a cold milk, and they have three pieces of dates. Um, first, the first time for me, it was it was like surprise, surprisingly, because drinking milk uh, for breaking the fasting, it was a little bit different. But then I understand that it's really good because you still we have an empty stomach. We 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 eat the dates and then we drink uh, the cold milk. After everybody, they broke uh, their fast. Everybody, they go inside the mosque. We pr we pray Maghra pray, and then you can see all the people they gather together. We chat, we talk, and then we eat something light. It depends to uh, if it's kind of dessert like light sweets, which is uh, made uh, at home. And of course, we are from United Arab Emirates, so we get used to have uh, sambusa. So they get, we get the sambusas there, and we have it also from other people. Uh, they bring it there, and we introduce it for them. Uh, this atmosphere let me feel the joy of the time there, the joy of fasting. Um, I was really warm and happy that we have lots of people from different nationalities, different religion, they gather together, they sit, they eat, and they enjoy their time. Beside this time uh, of breaking the fasting in the mosque, of course, we do these things through the embassies, either uh, our uh, United Arab Emirates embassy or Saudi Arabia, Tunisian, Algeria embassy. We do these things there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asma, for sharing your experiences with us. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Aruj now. Hi, everyone, and assalamu Um My name is Aruj, and uh, I'm a director in KPMG uh, IGH department. I've been uh, I've been in UAE actually since birth, and I've spent uh, most of my uh, time in UAE uh, itself and very limited time in Pakistan, but Ramadan in uh, Pakistan is not very uh, different than in UAE. And uh, before I start, I just wanted to give a bit of a background of Ramadan, that uh, Ramadan is the ninth uh, month of the calendar and uh, of the Islamic calendar. And it was, it is believed that uh, the Holy Book of Muslims Quran was uh, revealed to our prophet in this month. And uh, Ramadan is not about uh, just abstaining from food and drink. Uh, it's also about abstaining from any wrongful acts and being involved in more good conduct and uh, uh, reflecting more upon yourself and uh, doing more towards the less fortunate people. Few of the things that uh, what Ramadan means to us is, uh, first of all, spending more time with family and friends during iftar. So uh, what happens uh, uh, here or in Pakistan is that uh, uh, we we have a uh, we have families and relatives and friends, and usually pre-COVID days uh, we get together in uh, large gatherings and we have iftar together. And not only ourselves, we check with on our neighbors, we check on our communities, you know, and we we always uh, cook food, and we give it to others. Uh, others cook food and they give it to us. So that's a very very common uh, practice uh, that that we do. 
and uh, usually usually on Fridays or Saturdays we we cook a lot of biryani and we distribute it in our in our communities even over here in in UAE uh, for example the, the people in my floor uh, we we usually cook food and we give it to them as a as a as a gesture and to get to know them more to get to know our neighbors itself other things that we really reflect on Ramadan is being more kind, being more tolerant, being more considerate towards each other, thinking about each other, uh, spending time reflecting on our actions. So, uh, the uh, I'll, I'll, because we are in the last days of Ramadan, so one more thing I would like uh, everyone to know that the last 10 days of Ramadan are the most important, uh, are, the, are the most important where we try our best to be in our best behavior and uh, spend the nights in prayers and uh, spend the days in giving more to the community, giving more to the society, and obviously also preparing for the Eid, uh, where uh, where we uh, buy gifts uh, and clothes for ourselves, uh, we buy gifts for others, for our friends and for our families. Uh, in in Pakistan, uh, unfortunately, currently in Pakistan, uh, there, there is a lockdown, so uh, th uh, things are different right now. But usually, what happens during Eid is that everyone is going and buying uh, uh, clothes and bangles and uh, uh, clothes, a, a lot of <laughs> clothes actually, and it's it's a really fun environment where uh, everyone is just happy and uh, uh, just trying to get as many gifts as as many people as as possible and uh, during the eid we also have a tradition where we uh, give out uh, money especially to the people younger to us especially the kids so what happens is that uh, during eid we will have like uh, all the cousins uh, like, and all the kids like at least 20 30 who will be just waiting in line uh, expecting uh, for what they call eid which is uh, uh, like you know small amount of money as a gesture to, to the kids, so it's like the most happiest day uh, for everyone. And uh, going back, I just wanted to uh, uh, tell you how how a Ramadan day looks like. And uh, we wake up uh, in the morning for suhoor, and uh, typically suhoor is uh, suhoor and if iftar both are uh, supposed to be where we eat uh, only one third, like. The concept is that we should eat just one third of our appetite and one third should be for water and one third should be left uh, uh, should be left and if we follow uh, if we follow this routine then it's supposed to give us a lot of health benefits and uh, uh, it's something you can say similar to an intermittent fasting which we do for 30 days it's it, it takes out the toxins from our body and it really helps us out once we break our fast, we have our Taraweeh prayers, uh, where uh, where all uh, all the men go for Taraweeh. Uh, before COVID, uh, uh, especially in UAE, uh, the women were also allowed to go. So we used to go out with my like I used to go with my mother and with my sisters and my brother and father. We used to go together for Taraweeh prayers, and then we used to come back. And then, especially in the last ten nights of Ramadan, uh, we used to have prayers. Uh, starting either from 12 to 2 or 2 to 4, which uh, again, all of us used to go together. And it, it, it was, uh, uh, you can say, uh, the, the, the nights of Ramadan are always uh, uh, lit and you can hardly find anyone uh, sleeping. In, in Pakistan, the good thing about uh, uh, Ramadan was that all night, all the shops used to be open and, and you would feel so much of uh, uh, you know, so much of noise and so so much of brightness, and you you wouldn't feel it's 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 night. It's like you know the the, the nights were always uh, awake. So I'm hoping once COVID is over, it, inshallah, we'll go back to the to the old happy days. But uh, unfortunately, this year uh, due to COVID, there has been a lot of restrictions. I think that uh, uh, that's it. For mine. Thank you. Thank you, Aruj. Now it's uh, it's time to have some have some fun and go through some Arabic phrases with Asma. Um, thank you, Ivana, for uh, for pulling up the PowerPoint. And 
Asma, if I may pass it back to you, please. I will not even attempt my my uh, Arabic skills on this. <laughs> no, we need to practice with you, Heather. Well, thank you, Ivana, <laughs> for helping us. And then I will ask everybody also to help uh, to help us in practicing these words, which is a little bit easy, but still, when we just know how, what does it mean, um, it's like 50% you can pronounce it with it. Um, Ivana, if we will go to the second uh, slide, please. Thank you. Um, this word, we say it in Arabic, sadaqa. A sadaqa, it refers to the voluntary giving of alms or charity. It is the act of giving something you own to someone who is in need without seeking uh, a substitute in return. Usually the sadaqa, um, this is something anybody can do it anytime do, uh, during the whole year. But in Ramadan, we have any act you do it, any good act you do it, you have like a credit for it. And usually the credit is higher in, in, in retained on it. For that, the people, they try to help each other to take out sadaqa, to take this charity. Usually it comes in different variety, like uh, um, giving people um, uh, money we have through the Red Crescent, or we can give uh, the, the money for uh, some, um, some families, you know, who they need like to get uh, food, to get some, uh, some things they needed for home. Um, um, this is this is something it's easy and the people usually if any person thought will do it always will get used to to do it and would love to continue to do it. So sadaqa is something really encouraging for everybody. Can we go for the second slide, Ivana, please? Zaka. Zaka is um, it uh, literally means that uh, w uh, which pro uh, purifies. It is considered a way to, pur uh, to purify one's income and wealth by giving away a percentage of the total income you have on a yearly basis. Uh, for for us, zakah. Uh, uh, each person, if they reach the adult uh, age and they have their own income they need to take every year a percentage of what they have it not not for example um, just to make it simple if for example i'm saving some money i need to take like a small amount and give this one for other people to do other things for them to help them in it uh, for for ladies, of course, ladies they love jewelry. Uh, I'm sure that's uh, that's uh, some people like to have gold. Somebody they have like lots of earrings, diamond, gold with other ruby stones and these things. And we're supposed to ask our husbands to buy for us when we have an occasion or something. Usually, these jewelries, if we're not using it, we need every year to have a percentage of it, to, uh, of the total amount of it, to have it as a zakah for the other people. Usually the zakah, even not only for uh, the money and uh, for the jewelry, for example, the people who they have farm, other people who have stock in their, uh, in their, house, in their farms or something, also they need just to take this one. It's a feeling that when you take out the zakah, you are giving part of the things you have it, the precious thing which you have it for other people. This sadaqa or zakah, it encourages us to be, uh, you know, to, uh, to usually what we say for the kids, caring is sh uh, sharing is caring. The zakah and sadaqa encourage us and help us to be uh, to share everything and this is really something it's good uh, we have it 
I'll be happy if everybody try to pronounce Zaka and Sadaqa. Heather, what about trying to say it? Uh, can you go back? Uh, so first was Sadaqa. Yes, excellent. Qaf, Qaf, Sadaqa. <laughs> excellent, good. And Zaka or Zakat? Zakat. Yeah. Yes, you can say it Zaka or Zakat. Okay, okay. Yes. I, I have a question for you, Asma. So yes. the difference between the two. Um, so Sadaka could is is um is not connected to income and it can take any form, is that correct? Right. You um it's not anybody can do it. Any amount you can pay or anything you can take it out. Even the kids, usually we give them like, for example, an amount of tender hams. We have somebody who will clean the streets or somebody. We are, we tell them, go and give this one for this person. But zakah is, is like an obligation for the person who is an adult who is working and they they have these things. For example, if I'm a student, okay, I have jewelry. Um, my father, of course, he give me a salary, a monthly salary, which I spend it always. And I don't. It's finished before the end of the month, mm -hmm. so I I take the other salary from my mother, but I don't have to pay the zakah because um, I'm still uh, my dad and my mom pays me. But if I reach uh the the adult age and i'm working i need to pay the zakah for what i have with me understood for the for a sadaqa is there what's the most common form is it is it most frequently money anything anything you you have it usually usually they say it um something you like it something with you and you have it with you you own it you can give it even if you have for example um you're having your lunch but still uh, you make a small uh, a bigger amount than the amount you use it always you put it in a takeaway plates and you give it for other people this is kind also of uh, sadaqa and right here how they say even if you smile this is a kind of sadaqa too that's that is that's a wonderful yes. it's a wonderful way to look at it. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Asma. No, no, it's all right. So it differ. Even if you have, like, for example, you have uh, you have clothes, you have even um, uh, some people, you know, uh, they have something uh, extra with furniture, other things. They give it for other people who need it. It's kind of sadaqa. It goes in it. And my last question <laughs> before you yes. move on. For the the cuts, how how often is it a typically uh, paid out? Is there a, a common common frequency? It's uh, it's yearly yearly amount, uh, Heather. Okay. So, yeah, most of the people they uh, usually they go and they pay. Uh, the, they take out the zakah and uh, as I mentioned in Ramadan, as because we have the credit, you get it from God. The credit out it comes for you um, like it's double or triple the normal days. For that, you can see most of the people they take the zakah of their money, the zakah of their uh, farm, uh, stock in the farm they have it, all of it, or even the factories and these things. They take the zakah out in Ramadan. Understood. Yeah, but Thank the zakah, there is a point in zakah. Thank you, uh, Heather. Usually in zakah, if you give the people uh, the money of zakah, um, you need you need to a little bit mention that this is the money of the zakah, not as sadaqah. Sadaqah, you can give anybody who, who you sense that they need it or something. But in zakah, you have to have a specific to show them to to know that they are needing. For example, we have some people some people in jail, and they need to go out from jail. For example, somebody like um, uh, they took a big loan from the bank, they couldn't pay it back, and they they uh, it goes their case to the court, and then they have to be in jail for a specific amount of time. 
if I have the zakah, I can give it for these people to pay for the court and come out from the jail. This is one of the example. Thank you. Thank you for being so kind to answer all of my queries. Thank, Asma. You. <laughs> Thank you. Can we go please Ivana for the, the last slide? Okay. What um, Ruj was explaining about Eid and talking, it just makes me feel like, yay, we are happy that we have in Ramadan, but usually like four or five days before Eid, you can see, um, the sense of read um, by preparing, as Uruj said, preparing the uh, the clothes, um, even uh, the people they do um, a specific uh, the desserts and sweet they prepare it at home, uh, the cleanup in the house just to make it ready for read the decorations accessories, all this it makes us like yay. Um, we are happy that Eid is coming. Um, usually, we have the Eid, it comes after Ramadan. So, it's like a pronounce, um, announcing that Ramadan is finished, we are having this Eid. We have Eid al-Futr al and we have Eid al-Abha. Eid al-Futr, which comes exactly after Ramadan. Now, this is, I think I'm going to ask Ivana to say it with me. And then we will ask Heather to say it. And then even our audience, they can record it and send it for us so we can hear it. And I'm sure that they would say it in a proper way. Usually, if somebody came and greet us for Eid, so uh, for example, they came and they said, Eid Kumbarak. If somebody said this sentence for you, what you supposed to answer this person? You 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 can uh, you can answer this person and say, "Asakum min al aydin." That means we wish you that you you uh, you will be enjoying or you will be happy in Eid. So Ivana, can you go? Uh, can you pronounce for me, "Asakum min al aydin"? Absolutely, Asma. I'm gonna try. Thank you. Okay, "Asakum min al aydin." Excellent, excellent. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, some people, you know, what they, they might say, "Taqabbal Allah Salih," "Taqabbal Allah," "Taqabbal Allah Salih Al-Amal," or "Taqabbal Salih Al-Amal." So this is like, uh, uh, um, inshallah, God, inshallah, we hope that God uh, will accept. What did you did in Ramadan? All the all the praying, all the fasting, all the things you do it through sadaqa, anything you do it, uh, a work and in, uh, in Ramadan, we are hoping that, inshallah, God will accept it from you. So if if you if somebody said that one, you uh, it's good to say for them, minna o minkum. So Heather, can you say it, please? Minna, minna, or minkum. minna or minkum. Yes, excellent. And I think Uruj will gonna tell us one of the words what they say it in Pakistan. Uruj? Yes, yeah, uh, Asma. For Eid, usually for Eid, when you say, when you greet somebody for Eid in Pakistan, what would you say for them? Like how we, we say Eid Mubarak. Actually, we, we just say Eid Mubarak. Yeah, and see? Eid <laughs> Mubarak. Yes. Thank you, Uruj. The funny thing and the good thing, okay, I'm a, I am a, I am adult now and I am a mother, but still, until now, I get my idea from my mother, I get my idea from my father and from my grandfather, plus my husband. So usually when uh, when the people, the first day of Eid, after they they go, usually they gather and they go to pray in the, in the mosque, but not inside the building of the mosque. They have like 
I'm sure if you go around, you will see we have like some mosque, which is only they have a wall and it's open area. Usually they do the eat, pray there. Uh, after they finish all of them praying, when they come home, as Uruj explained, uh, we, we give money usually as idea or some some people you know like, like they give idea like small gifts if it's jewelry if it's for somebody close of the family member of the family but mostly we pay idea the idea is uh, money uh, Heather how much you think we have the idea and the, how much how much money yes I have absolutely no idea, Asma. <laughs> try, try. I didn't tell you before because I want to ask you this question. Um, so I'm just going to say 50 dirhams. Okay. Ivana? I think I'm going to go with a bit less. Let's say 10. Okay. Uruj, can you tell me what, what do you pay there for ideas? Uh, it actually ranges <laughs> from yeah. kids, to, kids to adults, but uh, in dharams it can be uh, like uh, if if these are kids, maybe twenty dharams or uh, fifty dharams. If uh, adults, maybe hundred dharams or two hundred dharams. Yes, thank you. All of you give a, a good answer. Um, <laughs> usually. I am one one person. After I pray, I dress up, I go out, I face my husband with my kids, usually, and I ask him, I tell him, Eidak Mbarak. Usually for male, we say Eidak Mbarak. And then I just give him my hand and tell him, Wain al So I take the my idea for out from him. The second day, I got my idea from my father and my mother. Even if my father is traveling abroad, my envelope come with my name sealed in it, and they have a, a, an amount of money in it, which is really good. <laughs> so for ladies, for example, now I would say for, for you, Heather, I would say, Heather, Eidich Mbarak. If it's for a man, I would say Eidak Mbarak. So you can see we have we have a little bit difference in how to pronounce it if it's for male or, or if it's for female. And then if you are saying it, if you enter and there are lots of people saying uh, staying or something, you just greet them and you say Eidkum Mbarak. It's easy, but you need to practice it. <laughs> As with anything, it is with anything you learn in life. <laughs> yes. About money, idea. In our house, it starts with five dirhams. It depends to the age, as uh, Ruth said, and it depends to the family. It starts, it varies from five dirhams and it reach for some some people, they take like five thousand or four thousand dirhams. So it varies from one person to another, and it varies from one family to other. Of course, the, all the kids they get happy when they they enjoy it because before Eid they are counting. Yes, my uncle, my second uncle, third uncle will give me tick 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 tick. That my aunts, my grandmother, my grandfather. And they they start to put how much they will get and what they are going to spend this money in it. Some parents they get rich from their kids because they take the money usually usually moms do these things, but not all of them. They say, Habibi, I'll take your money and I'll save it for you, which is like a backup money, which they spend it, and then they can give it back for their kids. And if the kids are small, they won't remember these things. So we have lots of jokes. Now when they say, for example, they say the richest person now and during Eid 
is that are the kids because all of them they take idea. Some some other families they usually they don't give the adults idea. They said only idea is for kids. So adults they don't take it. But still in other houses like us, we still take the idea. It's something enjoyable and it's like I'm happy that my mother until now, even I have kids, but still I am her baby. She still give me idea and my dad do the same thing, which is really fun. Thank you so much, Asma. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Thank you. We've really learned a lot with you with you both today. Um, okay. well, do we have any questions for Asma or Aruj? I know that we've gone over time today. Sorry to so. keep them a little. Doesn't look like we have any questions in the in the group chat. Thank you again so much, Aruj, Asma, for joining us today and sharing your experiences and teaching us about uh, Ramadan. Thank Ramadan you. For Shukra Zilan to you both. Yes. Thank you, uh -huh. everyone who has joined us today and over the last couple of weeks. Thank you to Ivana. Um, and Fiaz behind the scenes working so hard to make this happen and to Nina Allison who has brought this together and I wish you all a wonderful weekend and a wonderful end to the holy month of Ramadan. Thank you very much.